Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, one of Zimbabwe's vice presidents quits following claims that he sexually propositioned multiple married women, including one who allegedly worked for him. Kembo Mahadi says that he's been set up but steps down anyway. Also, there's an anxious wait ahead for grieving parents as Nigeria's Zamfara state officials say that they're negotiating with the kidnappers of 317 schoolgirls and won't yet be sending security forces after the children. And rights activists in Morocco try to penetrate the culture of silence and raise awareness of the scale of the problem of sexual and domestic abuse in the country. Half of women say that they've faced violence, but a fraction have reported anything. But first, one of Zimbabwe's two vice presidents has resigned amidst an alleged sex scandal. Kembo Mahadi insists that he's the victim of a smear campaign, although he hasn't said by who. In late February, a news website released phone recordings allegedly of Mahadi having sexually explicit conversations with two married women. Ryan Truscott has more. Vice President Kembo Mahadi said he was resigning to protect the integrity of the presidency. He's still denying that he had affairs with married women. He says he's a victim of what he called voice cloning, information distortion and political sabotage. He didn't say who might have targeted him, so there will be some speculation he has enemies within the ruling ZANU-PF party. When Mahadi defended himself last week against these allegations, there was no suggestion from him that resignation was on the cards. His statement today then is something of a surprise, especially his admission that he has personal problems. He said he needed space to deal with those problems outside the government. And perhaps, in a nod to the reputational risk the scandal has turned out to be for Minangagwa's government, the vice president said he wanted to make sure his challenges didn't compromise the presidency. Zimbabwe hasn't had a vice president resign before, though vice presidents have been sacked in recent years. Joyce Mujuru and Emerson Menengagwa were themselves both sacked by the late President Robert Mugabe. President Menengagwa has promised to clamp down on corruption in his government. While the allegations against Mahadi are not primarily about corruption, a high-profile sex scandal certainly isn't helpful to a government trying to project itself as reformist. Who will be brought in to replace the vice president will now be of great interest. Will it be a woman? Will it be a former member of ZIPRA, one of the two military wings that helped to secure independence? Already the name of the current Defence Forces commander, Philip Sibanda, has been mentioned as a possible replacement. Twitter in Zimbabwe is alive with debate tonight, and these are the questions many are asking. Ryan Truscott there for us. Now, officials in Nigeria's Zamfara state say that they're in contact with kidnappers who took 317 girls from a boarding school last week. The education commissioner says that they know who has the captives and where they're being held, but are holding off from going after them as negotiations continue. Nicola Shima has more. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari sent a delegation to Zamfara state. That's where 317 schoolgirls were kidnapped on Friday. Local officials said they were in touch with the gunman who abducted the students and they are negotiating for their release. Ministers said Buhari was monitoring the situation closely. He has condemned in the strongest terms this act and assured that these children will be back and reunited with their families, inshallah. The kidnapping in Jangebe in northwest Nigeria was the third such attack in the country in less than three months distraught parents visited the school. I have four daughters inside taken away. There are five, but one was rescued by Almighty Allah. We are praying to God and let them, let God guide them from the evils of the towers. This is all what we can see, but we cannot imagine their situation. Local officials said that repentant criminals who took part in a state government amnesty program were serving as intermediaries between the kidnappers and the authorities. In recent years, such kidnappings have sometimes been planned by jihadist group Boko Haram. But more recent abductions have been carried out by armed gangs with no specific ideological aims. Well, the new head of the World Trade Organization had her first day on the job on Monday. Nigerian Ngozi Okonjo Iweala took her seat for her first general council meeting. It's the, the, the WTO's top decision-making body. Now, Dr. Konjo Wheeler 
made history when she was confirmed as the first female and first African WTE, WTO Director General last month. The former finance and foreign minister has said that she wants the body to be more dynamic and bring in tangible change. We have to be more accountable to the people we came here to serve, the ordinary women and men, and our children who hope that our work here to support the multilateral trading system will result in meaningful change in their lives, will improve their standard of living, and create decent jobs for those who seek work. Well, Ghana and Ivory Coast became the first African countries to start vaccination campaigns using doses from the WHO's COVAX scheme. Now, it was set up to make sure that low- and middle-income nations could inoculate their people as richer countries pull ahead in a global race for vaccine stock. The WHO's head has pointed out that unequal access has seen younger and healthier adults in some richer countries vaccinated against coronavirus ahead of at-risk health workers in developing countries. Nevertheless, Monday's rollout is seen as a welcome step. Olivia Bizo has more. Ghana, making history. As President Nana Akufo Addo receives the world's first free vaccine from COVAX. It's a UN backed global scheme aimed at leveling the playing field between countries as poor nations trail behind others in sourcing immunizations against COVID 19. It's important that I set the example that this vaccine is safe by being the first to have it so that everybody in Ghana can feel comfortable about taking this vaccine. The First Lady, Rebecca Okufo-Addo, also received an Oxford AstraZeneca shot one day before the rest of the 600,000 doses are deployed across the country. At the top of the priority list are essential workers and people over the age of 60. But the logistics of distributing the jabs aren't the only challenge. Many Ghanaians remain unsure that the vaccination is safe, with conspiracy theories casting doubts on the programme. Doubts that authorities tried to tamper at the reception ceremony. Your Excellency, thankfully, we have a vaccine now to help in the fight against the virus. The ceremony this morning, I believe, will help change minds about the conspiracies that people have against this virus. Another country at the front of the COVAX queue is Ivory Coast, with injections also beginning on Monday. Next in line is Nigeria, that is due to receive nearly 4 million doses of the vaccine later this week. The World Health Organization has said it aims to distribute 600 million doses of the jabs to Africa by the end of the year, enough to vaccinate at least 20% of the population. Now, women's rights activists in Morocco are pushing back against the code of silence that has traditionally surrounded sexual and domestic abuse. A recent government survey found that 50% of women have been vict a victim of violence. A little under a third say that they've been raped. However, only a fraction say that they filed a complaint. Campaigners say that that has to change. Our correspondents report. <laughs> Breaking taboos around sexual violence against women. That's the driving mission of this production company. Their latest web series shows real victim testimonies illustrated by Moroccan artists, intended to give women's voices maximum exposure. Ces capsules, ce sont des témoignages authentiques de femmes qui ont été victimes de viols, soit dans un cadre conjugal, parce que ça existe, c'est même très répandu, euh, soit dans le cadre du travail. These poignant testimonies were then interpreted by illustrators to make a series of animated short films. La première fois où j'ai reçu l'audio, euh, j'avais les larmes aux yeux parce que j'ai écouté tous les témoignages, euh, j'ai écouté toute l'histoire, euh, comment elle raconte, comment elle parlait, euh, et on sentait euh, la souffrance dans sa voix. Du coup, c'était très difficile de l'écouter et le réécouter pour pouvoir euh, le mieux illustrer son histoire. An association helped to gather the witnesses. While many were keen to be heard, very few of them agreed to go public. Bouchra was one of those who decided to speak openly. I 
Ce qu'on demande pour l'instant, c'est que, euh, que, que la femme euh, frappe les portes des associations, parler de, sa, de, ce, de ce type de violence, parce qu'il est encore tabou, il n'ose pas de parler, il croit que c'est normal, euh, que le, même s'il est forcé de, de, de faire des rapports, euh, c'est normal, c'est la religion qui dit ça, c'est le, les coutumes, c'est les traditions, et, et maintenant c'est le temps de dire non, c'est le temps d'arrêter euh, ce, ce type de violence. The challenge is great, but more women say they are ready to face it. Well, that's it for Iron Africa. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care.